Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure that every Highland dancer wants to be the perfect Highland dancer. You have to be in really good shape. Um, the stamina needs to be built right up as well to get through a six-step island fling. I loved, uh, love working on high cuts. I think they're probably one of the hardest parts. My favorite thing to practice would definitely be the stress rate and Highland Reel. I would say leaps, um, high cuts, and uh, I was a big fan of the Chantreuse. That was my favorite dance. I guess I did like practicing high cuts, although they're difficult. They were um, something that you could see the improvement on. When I used to practice at home, I'd run up and down the stairs, right to the bottom of my basement and up the stairs to my bedroom. I did used to do three swords in a row, <laughs> which is a little bit odd probably, but to work on stamina, I would do that. I did the sword one day and then my mom told me just to turn the music back on, she made me do it again, <laughs> and then do it again. So I did that, which certainly helped. I also used to practice with little three pound weights. I would just hold them doing a whole high fling. I would practice about two or three times a week with my dance teacher, and then about two times by myself as well. We were at the studio pretty much every day of the week. We maybe had uh, a Sunday off or something like that, and then on the weekends there were competitions as well. Well, practicing definitely isn't the most fun thing to do. It's hard to get motivated to do it. Um, I think for me, it was just, I always practiced because I knew if I didn't, I wasn't going to get better. I also remember uh, for a while, I, uh, my studio was about two hours away from me. And so I remember going early on a Saturday morning and <laughs> leaving at five and warming up on a, a studio early on a Saturday morning and, but you know, loving every minute of it. I practiced at home in my living room and uh, in my bedroom sometimes, but I got kicked out of that because I started to make uh, indents in the ceiling in my room. And I've definitely broken my living room floor a little bit. It's the creakiest part of my house. Well, when I was younger, um, it was just the kitchen. We didn't have space. And then as I got a little bit older and more serious about it, my dad actually built a dance floor in our basement. So I had that area. And then eventually we turned our garage into a dance studio. So I was pretty lucky that my parents were willing to sacrifice part of their home for what I was doing. Our breakfast of champions was the chocolate chip muffin and chocolate milk. I'm big on bananas. I really like them. I have these cravings for them when I'm dancing, so I try to get those in. And every morning I would wake up, I had, um, well, the dancers know Wheaties. I ate Wheaties for breakfast. Friday night spaghetti, and um, Jackie Smith actually got me eating Wheaties in the morning. It sounds weird, but I had bran flakes, <laughs> and then <laughs> a large coffee. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Um, before I perform, it's always cracking every part of my body, lots of stretching and warming up, and I always mentally go through what I want to do, so the perfect dance. I visualize it, and then hopefully it translates when I get on stage. I love having the number seven in my number. If I have a seven, or you can make seven with the numbers in my competitive number, I just get sort of an extra little boost. I think it was around when I was 14 or so that I started to realize that I could be better than what I was doing and that's when I started to succeed more. I think first you have to love it because I think loving it is what makes you want to be better and better. Um, I think second is the drive and the motivation. I think you need to have the want, the drive, the need. I am a very competitive person, my whole family is. so. It's not necessarily to be the absolute best, but it's to be the best that I can be. You have to really love it. I mean, if you, if you don't have the passion for it, it's going to show on the stage. It's, everyone can go through the motions and do the technical aspects of it, but um, I think when you, you notice the dancers that um, show their emotion up on stage and you can see how much they love it and how much they're, they want to show everyone what they've been working on. So I think that splits people apart.
Yeah. Um, one motto that we always uh, live by with my dance teacher as well is attitude is altitude. So just to keep thinking positive and the more you're thinking positive, the more you're going to achieve. Um, just never giving up on yourself because you can achieve it.